I'm Arsen Yegazelan. Uh, I'm the team lead, machine learning team lead at WebFontaine. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the information extraction from unstructured invoices. The project uh, that uh, we in at WebFontaine were working on uh, during the last six, seven months. So uh, the outline is the following. Uh, uh, first, we are going to uh, state the problem, uh, understand um, what we want to solve. Then we'll talk about the traditional ways of uh, handling similar problems in machine learning. Uh, we'll discuss the deficiency of uh, those customary approaches uh, when applied to invoices. Uh, and we'll discuss the possibility of uh, alternative approaches with computer vision. Uh, before diving into the method itself and the network architecture, uh, we'll describe uh, what effort and time uh, was spent on data annotation for this project. And after that, I will present the method itself called char grid. Uh, and uh, we'll present the results obtained and we'll conclude with the conclusion and the future work. So uh, what we want to ideally get uh, is the following. Uh, we have an invoice uh, possibly scanned which means generally it's an RGB image, and we want to read the invoice and extract all the entities of interest from it. So uh, this is an example of it. Um, and the important information here is blurred on purpose as it is potentially more sensitive information than the rest. And as you can see, uh, there are some entities uh, like exporter name, exporter address, um, product description, product price, invoice total, etc., uh, that we would ideally like to extract from the invoice. Uh, the invoices have very different designs and layouts. Uh, each exporter has a different looking invoice layout uh, where the fields are uh, located differently with respect to each other. Uh, the challenge is to develop a model that can handle arbitrary invoices like we humans can do. Let's discuss the problem from the viewpoint of uh, machine learning. Uh, a very similar problem to this in machine learning is called named entity recognition or uh, NER for short. I'm going to call it NER. So what NER, uh, NER tries to accomplish is the following, uh, and I'm going to read the NER task definition from Wikipedia. So uh, named entity recognition is a subtask of information extraction uh, that seeks to locate and classify uh, named entities mentioned in unstructured text into predefined categories such as person names, organizations, locations, medical codes, etc. So uh, in uh, this example, uh, in the slide, uh, the entities are person, organization, dates, etc. The parallels with the uh, entity extraction from invoice should be evident by now. Uh, if we replace the person with exporter, date with invoice date, organization with country of export, etc., then we pretty much have one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, so we can imagine the invoice as a text and the extraction of entities from it as a task of NER. Uh, so how NER is generally uh, tackled in machine learning? Uh, a common way, uh, a common way to approach the task is to uh, it is the following: uh, we take a pretrained language model, uh, add a BLS CRF layer on top of it, and uh, fine tune the network to predict the BIO tags, which are the ground truth labels of their task. Um, if some of these terms uh, say nothing to you, uh, don't worry; they are not going to appear in other slides uh, of this presentation than this one, since the approach uh, that we will take later uh, is very different. Uh, uh, from, from the one mentioned here. Another method uh, worth mentioning is the BERT fine-tuning. Uh, a pre-trained BERT is fine-tuned for downstream NER and until recently it was the state of the art for the NER. So how can this be applied to invoices? Uh, a straightforward and, uh, and actually not very clever way uh, uh, is uh, simply to read the invoice line by line and present the whole content as an ordinary unstructured text and apply the above mentioned method flow, uh, uh, above mentioned flow, uh, which is uh, to replace the words with the embeddings from language model, push them to BLSTM and make predictions. Uh, this has uh, one obvious disadvantage. Uh, we lose the 2D information altogether. Uh, when we humans parse invoices visually, uh, the text itself is not enough for identifying the entities. Uh, we also make use of positional information of the words, uh, their relative locations, tables, lines, etc. And even if uh, the text alone was enough, still the positional and relative information of the text uh, uh, w would be very useful uh, when, uh, when paid attention to. 
so it would be much wiser to somehow incorporate the 2D information as well uh, into our model. Uh, so uh, this is exactly what the so-called CloudScan solution tries to do. Uh, so what it does, except uh, for the word embeddings, it also handcrafts uh, features uh, and fits them to the network. Such features can be uh, bounding box uh, normalized positions uh, of each word with respect to the invoice coordinate system. Another feature can be, for example, whether the given word parses as a date or matches a known country or zip code or any other feature that you might imagine can be useful. Um, such a solution is known. It produces very decent uh, results and uh, often is, uh, is a strong baseline uh, for all other uh, suggested alternative methods. Uh, so let's talk about the computer vision approach, but before that, uh, let's uh, mention again the disadvantages of the of the previous uh, approach. Uh, yes, it accounts for some uh, visual features like word coordinates, but uh, they are handcrafted and uh, rely on on the intuition of the engineer. Uh, it also doesn't make use of such a crucial piece of information like tables and lines in the invoice, which we hu humans uh, find uh, very useful. Uh, there are numbers of methods that are suggested to account exactly for this uh, with the help of computer vision methods. And in this presentation, we are going to talk about one of them. Uh, it's called uh, Chargrid and it's closest to what we implemented ourselves uh, in WebFontaine. It employs uh, the uh, computer vision uh, to exploit more efficiently the visual information. But let's first talk about the data annotation. So uh, it turned out to be one of the biggest challenges to have clean annotated data for the task. Uh, the main challenges were unified guidelines uh, of annotation uh, for very different types of invoices. Also the procedure of annotating uh, one invoice is very tedious and prone to mistakes. Uh, thus having a clean data is also a challenge. Uh, so, um, the uh, workflow, the high-level workflow is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, for each new invoice, a human analyzes it, identifies all the entities of interest, and draws a box around it and labels the box accordingly. Uh, such labels can be, for example, the exporter name, product price, etc. Uh, but to ensure the quality of the uh, annotation, we finally came up with the following high-level flow. Uh, invoice is annotated from the scratch by an annotator. Uh, then it is reviewed twice by other annotators, um, and then it passes a third review by the data scientist. Uh, data scientist. Uh, this may seem uh, excessive uh, from the first side, but it actually was the result of trial and error, uh, and pretty much the only way uh, we could get the clean data. I guess some people who have experience with managing uh, data annotation uh, processes and teams know that it is actually much harder than it uh, seems from the side. Also some uh, row statistics numbers. Our team of seven annotators uh, worked on, on the task for more than five months. And uh, as a result, uh, and after several filtering steps, we remained with, with uh, 9,000 annotated invoices. So before moving on to uh, target architecture itself, let's first uh, talk about what input it receives because it's a bit different than the usual computer vision network inputs, uh, which generally obtain uh, only the image itself. So for Chargrid, we pre-process the invoice image first uh, before feeding it to the network. Uh, for each document T, uh, we first extract uh, the textual information with an OCR engine, uh, which we developed ourselves. Uh, so uh, here an open source uh, OCR engine like Tesseract can also be used. Um, Tesseract is okay to start with, but uh, for documents, we developed our in-house OCR engine, which uh, works significantly better than Tesseract. Uh, and the um, correct uh, reading of the text is going to be very important for the model training later. Uh, so the output of the OCR is a set of bounding box coordinates uh, of each character and the characters uh, themselves. After passing all the invoices uh, through the OCR engine, uh, we next build the set of all characters. Uh, they are typically of, of the order of 60 or 70, like all characters, lower and uppercase, all numbers, and some punctuations. Uh, we then simply enumerate all those characters. N is the big, uh, capital N is the number of uh, all unique characters. After that, for a given invoice, we build the so-called char grid by following logic. In the IJ coordinate of the char grid, we insert the value of the character 
that is written in that location of the original invoice. If there is no character there, then uh, in the target, uh, zero is inserted. So in the end, uh, we uh, get uh, uh, we get uh, H times W matrix with the values from zero to N. Um, and with one hot encode the tensor uh, in the end, uh, which means like as the input to a network goes a tensor of the shape H times W times N. So uh, uh, this is the visual representation of the previous slide. Uh, the characters of the words are simply replaced with their enumeration values. Uh, here the image on the right is of course before the one hot encoding. Um, the advantage of this type of preprocessing um, is that it uh, preserves all the textual information. Uh, actually, the image can be downsampled to the um, to the size of the smallest character, not to the size, but rather to the uh, factor of, of the smallest character in the invoice when it's not get lo lost. And um, still, we that way will keep all the textual information. And by also concatenating the invoice image itself uh, to the chart grid, we will retain all the uh, visual information as well. So we talked about the input. Uh, let's uh, say a couple of words about the output as well, of the network. As an output for each pixel, we simply predict uh, to which class that pixel belongs to, like exporter name, product price, uh, background, invoice total, etc. So this means uh, the task is si uh, simply becomes an image segmentation task, uh, a pixel level classification. But it's not just a semantic segmentation, it should be noted, uh, that, uh, but it's an instant segmentation task because we also need to predict um, where one item information ends and the other inf uh, item information starts because uh, we can't infer it only uh, from the pixel information. Uh, thus, the uh, task uh, boils down to an instant segmentation task, uh, which has a large uh, body of research in, uh, in machine learning. And uh, we can simply try to apply the already known techniques to this. So let's look at the architecture. So uh, the common methods to, uh, handle, um, uh, to handle the instant segmentation task uh, are transferred also uh, to this approach. Uh, we first downsample the image to some uh, intermediate representation, uh, which is fed to uh, two upsampling branches, the um, uh, segmentation decoder and the detection decoder. Uh, both branches uh, perform convolutions uh, with upsampling operations and uh, skip connections. Uh, people who have worked on segmentation tasks uh, will find this architecture very familiar, actually, like uh, UNET or Generally, uh, many other networks uh, are very similar to this one, at, at least the segmentation branch. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and this network, uh, we implemented it from scratch in PyTorch uh, with several uh, changes in the architecture to account for our needs. So, uh, the uh, segmentation branch, uh, again, uh, performs just the pixel level classification. It simply predicts uh, to which class each pixel uh, in the input belongs to. Um, and the uh, detection branch performs item, uh, item detection. Uh, it predicts the anchor that the item belongs to and the bounding box coordinate. Um, and uh, the, detec uh, the detection decoder idea is very similar to what faster RCNN does. Um, so actually like uh, the both branches in the, net in the network architecture are very, um, familiar things. Uh, one uh, mimics UNET and the other one is uh, mimics faster RCNN. Uh, not one-to-one, -one, of course, but the idea is very similar. Um, so uh, maybe a couple of more notes to make about the architecture is that uh, dilated convolutions are used extensively because uh, the uh, information the recept uh, that increases the receptive fields uh, uh, of the of the network. Um, and yeah, generally, uh, when making predictions about the, uh, about the words or, or pixels, in this case, in the, uh, in the image, uh, to understand whether the given number is, is the invoice total or like item price, you really need to have the information from, from the other side of the invoice and the receptive field uh, uh, area is, is the, the receptive field is, is very important. Um, and dilated convolutions help here. So um, 
let's talk. Uh, let's describe the results. And in this slide, it's actually a screenshot of uh, of an actual output of our network um, for some invoice from the validation set. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, the output um, is exactly what was discussed above. Uh, the key entities are predicted as such, um, and uh, it is uh, reflected in their colors. Uh, each color represents a separate class. For example, the product description is uh, violet, and the product price is uh, magenta. The exporter address is in green, or, or whatever the, the colors are. So, um, yeah, and also, uh, as you can see, the bounding boxes are also uh, predicted correctly since there are two items uh, and both items are detected. And again, like here, uh, you can see again the, the point that if, if there was no item detection branch, if there was no this bounding box prediction, then we'll have only the, uh, uh, the classes of the, of the words and you won't really know uh, where one item ends and like how many item does the does the invoice have and uh, uh, item detection branch uh, is exactly doing that so um, uh, let's let's conclude let's wrap it up and um, uh, so what is chargrid uh, chargrid is a nice intuitive way an uh, intuitive method uh, that employs computer vision for traditionally an nlp task uh, it effectively make, uh, makes use of textual and uh, visual features without leaving uh, the feature engineering uh, to, to the engineer. Uh, the features are not handcrafted but learned by the network. And uh, what's more important, it, uh, it uh, allows to obtain pretty good results. More than 0.9 F1 score for well-represented classes. Mostly the, those are product description which uh, which are present on every invoice, product description, total invoice, product price, etc., or unit price of the product, um, and more than 0.8 F1 score for almost all of the uh, all the entities of interest. Uh, so, uh, as as a potential future work, um, can be mentioned the possibility of using other uh, computer vision algorithms for uh, uh, for uh, uh, for for the network for hand, uh, for tackling the task, uh, uh, also another uh, obvious potential improvement can be uh, the replacement of uh, character embeddings uh, with token and word embeddings like word to vec. Uh, and uh, if you, uh, when hearing the uh, about the token embeddings, think immediately about Bert, <laughs> then you are on the right path. Uh, because there is already another paper called Bert Grid by the by common authors, and uh, the general idea is exactly the same as in Char Grid, uh, but uh, the network input is simply replaced with uh, Bert token embeddings uh, instead of character level uh, one hot enumeration. And uh, this was pretty much uh, what I had for the presentation. Uh, you can reach me by the email. Uh, mentioned in in the slide and uh, I can take questions now if there are any thank you Arsene so we already have one question Karen Mambartsumian says is it possible to completely get rid of this pipeline approach and make the model end-to-end -end? and by pipeline he means the OCR component can we remove the OCR software from the pipeline and feed the image as input yeah uh, that's that's a good question actually uh, well uh, uh, in any case you need the text information uh, you can't uh, uh, you can't move forward without extracting the text so uh, there actually is a paper uh, that we saw um, which does it end to end uh, which uh, takes the input predicts the uh, characters in the input uh, in the invoice uh, and uh, also does the uh, does the uh, entity extraction. So yeah, uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, there are such approaches, but uh, uh, the OCR itself is also a good thing to have. Just the engine itself. And uh, uh, so uh, there, 
they in, in the paper that that I mentioned there is actually uh, some uh, comparison with other methods but uh, to me I think uh, it's uh, it makes more sense to separate the logically or uh, logically separate the uh, parts which really uh, are are separate for example the OCR shouldn't have anything to do with the uh, with the NER part, with the entity extraction, and you, once you have a good NER model, or once once you get a good OCR model, you can work on improving the other. Uh, but yeah, you can do it uh, in an end-to-end -end fashion. And and that network, uh, which uh, was presented in that paper and was working end-to-end, -end, like really looked uh, ugly to me. Like too many components, too many losses, and such. Okay, and in general, uh, to elaborate on that, I think you always have a lot more data to train for OCR, and uh, the invoice data set is uh, smaller by several magnitudes because you can yes, get OCR that's parts really good statically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is another question from Mina Sabramian. He says, can you describe how do you cope with annotation task in general? And particularly, did you build custom annotation tool or use something ready? Uh, yeah, so uh, how we deal with the data annotation task in general, I think uh, I can't answer that question because like, pretty much this was the first, uh, our first uh, experience. Uh, but about the tool, so for this task uh, uh, specifically, the annotation was a very simple one in terms of what the tool should provide to, to, for us to be able to annotate. So we used the, uh, an open source tool. Um, uh, yeah, the, the tool uh, is open source. Uh, it's called Label Image, Label IMG, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it uh, provided all the basic functionality which we needed for this task. In terms of, of the tool itself, we didn't need much, but the task itself was very uh, um, sophisticated and complicated. Yeah, I think that's okay. the answer. Thank you. So I have a couple of more questions. We have five minutes. So can you go back to the example output? Yes. Uh, or, or you I mean uh, your example? Uh, so, yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. So here, as far as I understand, the, your instances and your segmentations are not matched to each other. Uh, yeah, the uh, instances are only uh, for the items. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. The segmentation is generally for for all the words. Yeah, this is different from regular instance segmentation. Uh, yeah. uh, that people do. Yeah, this is actually quite interesting. I... Yeah, generally in, in case of instance segmentation, uh, segmentation, you have a class for, you have an instance segmentation for all the classes that you have. Here we have instance segmentation for only one class, which is item, and which mm -hmm. is not itself a segmentation class. Okay, and then the rest is, I see, yeah. It's like a clever mix of object detection yeah. and yeah. semantic segmentation. And then you have this post-processing step where you uh, you go through each uh, item row and then look for pixels that, um, I see. Yeah, the, uh, the post-processing step is straightforward, but not obvious, not, not simple to uh, implement. Still, there's a bit logic to, to do for post-processing. And when you measure your accuracy, uh, when do you measure it? It's like at the very end or at this stage, uh, at the segmentation stage? Because you can have mistakes at so many places, right? You can you can have a problem even in the coding phase. Yeah, uh, we we track all the information all throughout the training. Uh, we, for example, uh, yeah, the loss and. Uh, mostly the loss during the whole training and after each epoch, uh, the, um, the segmentation uh, pixel accuracy, word level, uh, most, uh, pixel accuracy, and also the, uh, the detected boxes accuracy metrics as well. 
Mm. So yeah, uh, the um, the metric is is tracked after each uh, epoch. I see. So if you uh, when you say like zero point nine F score, yeah, uh, can we look at this example and tell like what's wrong here? For example, I see one of the units. Yeah, is not uh, so one of the unit prices is not detected. That's uh, correctly mentioned, uh, and uh, this will uh, definitely. Uh, uh, influence negatively the F1 score of the unit prices. And it's not the unit price, it's, it's the item unit. Yes. Uh, unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, quantity is one and the unit of the quantity is uh, um, KIT or whatever it is. Uh, actually, yeah, right now, for example, the units, uh, we have a smaller, a smaller F1 score for units and quantities as well. But as you can see, for example, the uh, uh, Frequently occurring classes like currency, like uh, not like uh, like the total price or or the item price or the item unit price and descriptions, uh, we have a very good score for them. I see. Yeah, this is very. And nice. advanced scores they can be uh, calculated either on uh, pixel level. So if there is one pixel uh, missing, then it uh, affects the F1 score. Or they can be uh, calculated on the word level. So. From the pixel information, you uh, infer whether the word is predicted or not, and then calculate the advanced score of the word level. Okay. And that's more uh, more objective metrics. And do you care about currency here? Looks like uh, the cur currency is much simpler to uh, to match just by uh, vocabulary search. So that's why we don't even care about it. We have like the list of all currencies, and we just match yeah. it. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, one more question from Minas. He asks, does the model include lines? Somehow encoded in pre-processed stage, we see violet horizontal lines on the right picture. Uh, well, the uh, lines in the right picture are simply uh, the detected boxes. But uh, there's actually a good point in the question whether we can use the lines that are on the left hand side because when a human uh, looks at the invoice, uh, the uh, in inference that he makes from uh, from that uh, from that look is definitely includes the uh, uh, the, the lines and the tables help help that inference uh, for the human. And uh, this information, as was as uh, I mentioned during the presentation, can be added to a network because, like uh, the chart grid itself, which is just the channels of the one hot encoded text. You can add one more channel of, of the image itself, or or simply you can um, uh, make some uh, make the grid uh, or extract the grid information from the table with the help of computer vision techniques, and add only this lines information to the uh, to the input. But you didn't do these things. Uh, no, we did. You did. So you... yeah, we did like uh, did with different uh, configurations of input. And to be honest, like it didn't help much. I, we thought that uh, the grid information would help, but it seems like uh, for the for yeah. the network, it's not a lot, uh, this, that information is not as helpful as as for us humans. Perfect. One more thing I wanted to ask: uh, when you say that zero point nine F score, is that enough for the business needs? I don't yeah, uh, it should be mentioned that it's uh, 0 0.9 for uh, for a very hard validation set. Uh, the invoices are very very different, and even when uh, when doing a train uh, validation split, we uh, were uh, um, we were separating in such a way that the invoices from the same exporter don't uh, get one into validation and one into train set, so that uh, it's we are making the task even a bit more difficult. Uh, so this 0 0.9 is mostly because of the ver some very hard invoices, which even a human uh, can uh, miss, or or some of the things are also because of uh, some uh, problems with the annotations. So visually, when we uh, uh, monitor or inspect the predictions, they are pretty good. I see. And and on the, and on invoices which have uh, more or less uh, standard layout, uh, which are not some uh, weird looking mm -hmm. invoices, we have pretty much a very close to perfect prediction. I see. Thank you very much, Arsen. Thank you. Uh, this was interesting.